Sorry about that, Master of Kialder. Whatever it was. How about we start over? I'm Beowulf and that's Billy. We're just a couple of wandering bastards who got summoned here about three months ago. We didn't have a master or even the faintest idea what the hell was going on besides the fact that it's ungodly cold here. After wandering around aimlessly for a while, one thing led to another and we ended up becoming guards for this village. Well, leaders, really. I can't believe that two rogue servants survived out here for three whole months. Still, you both appear to be from proper human history. Why did you challenge us to a fight? We had to prove that we were strong, or the Yaga outside would never have accepted us. Even with their boss vouching for us? Trust me, they're stubborn as hell. They wouldn't have believed it if they hadn't seen it for themselves. Here, have some coffee. Or, well, it's broth made from beans that look like a mite, like, look a mite like coffee at least. I added a bit of sugar, so it'll taste better than it looks. Just a little something in the way of an apology for the testing uh, business out there. Reckon we got a little carried away seeing other humans. Well, servants and a mage besides us. Yep. Hell, I was downright euphoric. Sorry about that, lady. Do not trouble yourself about it. In truth, I am positively elated that I was not the only one the land called here. I cannot believe you made coffee here, Eve. What a peculiar taste. It tastes like spiced apple, and yet there is still a distinct coffee flavor to it. <laughs> Feels so much warmer. Ain't that the truth. Seems these Yaga are just as keen to eat a good meal as any of us humans. That, I'm afraid of, is a luxury our rebel army cannot afford. Whoops, sorry about that. Allow me to introduce myself again. My name is Adelante. I am the servant leading the rebel army against Ivan the Terrible. The last time we met, we did little more than glare at one another from across the snowy plains without revealing our true names. I am pleased we have had the chance to sit face to face and speak with each other. Same here. I'm glad you stopped by. The Yaga here can be a little weird at times. Of course, that's probably why they didn't have a place under Ivan's regime. For our part, the rebel army decided to revolt because they were too weak to survive under Ivan's rule. I know our groups possess very different temperaments, but would it be possible for us to join forces nonetheless? Well, speaking for ourselves, we ain't got no quarrel with the notion, but... I don't see our people going for it. For the moment, I'd have to say no. That hardly comes as a surprise. The Yaga and the Rebel Army had no issue with me being a woman. But given how the others were looking at me earlier... Yep. For these Yaga, male chauvinisms, chauvinisms the order of the day. There's no strong female Yaga, or at least there weren't any that were able to prove their strength. So this lot's gone and decided that all females are weak everywhere. What drivel. Both men and women are equally capable fighters so long as they are well trained. Yaga may not die from extreme temperatures or excessive blood loss like humans do, but they are just as vulnerable to having their brains or hearts destroyed as we are, male or female. You won't die from losing blood? Alright, I guess you humans can die that way, huh? If you sever a Yaga's artery or the like, our blood vessels just reconnect themselves. If we're losing blood, we just produce more automatically. So you humans die if one of your arteries gets severed, huh? Sounds rough. That reminds me. On our way here, we saw some Yaga who had been cut to pieces. Was that your doing, Beowulf? Cut to pieces? I don't remember killing any Yaga recently. Besides, my sword's practically a club, really. Better for pounding than slashing. The Yaga have been passing around a story about a human killer. Sounds similar, you ask me. Killer? Right. There was an urban legend of sorts going around some time after we were summoned here. It says there's someone going around cutting down Opernik and Yaga alike. Whoever it is happened to save one of our guys at one point, and he said they claimed to be from Kialda. Kialda, that is your organization, is it not, Vane? Do you have any idea who this person might be? Maybe. 
Well, they may not be our ally, but if they are killing Opernik, they are no friend of the Tsar either. Anyway, getting back on track. One of the problems is that these Yaga put too much importance on being strong. That's not by any means the only problem. They think it's only proper for the weak to serve the strong, or for those who are big and tall to look down on those who aren't, so to speak. Been, been telling them that ain't the case, but calling them slow learners is giving them too much credit. I've been ambushed more times than I care to count. Of course, a few rounds to the knees and belly settled them down. See, Yaga are more than a bit tough to kill. The whole reason these Yaga have come to accept us as their leaders is because we kept beating them in one-on-one -on -one duels. And since you guys held your own against us, they'll accept you too. Truly, we'd love to get the hell out of this place ourselves. But we can't. We know what would happen if we did. I see. These Yaga would turn to banditry. That's the big problem. You guys must have run into bandits a few times by now, right? Well, they used to be part of our group. And there's bound to be some Yaga here who aren't going to be happy about you killing their friends. You mean you knew your Yaga had turned to banditry and did nothing to stop them? No, no, that ain't the way of it. When Beowulf and I took over things here, some of the Yaga got it into their heads to defect. Uh, said they wouldn't let no humans lead them and they'd rather join up with the rebel army. Never entered our minds they'd set upon our settlements and seal food. We're awful sorry. They must have changed their minds after seeing us. They probably wrote us off as just a group of weak, disenfranchised Yaga led by a human female. It's my fault for not stopping them. I'm sorry. What is done is done. I cannot expect you to keep track of those who have defected from your, com from your command. Still, given everything you have told us, it does seem that joining forces would be fraught with risk. My settlement is home not only to women who have never seen combat, but also children, the elderly, and those suffering various illnesses. There would inevitably be a great deal of discord between the two sides. Exactly. So how about this? Instead of joining forces, we forge an alliance. That way, there shouldn't be any problem. So we would each carry out our own tasks separately, but work towards the same goal. Yes, that would be better. We may not be able to coordinate our plans of attack, but we would at least avoid getting in each other's way. How would we communicate? Well, what about that lovely girls of, girl of yours who keep, pops up and chimes in every now and then? Can't you people like Kiata or whatever it was do something to keep us in touch? I'm sorry, right now the Shadow Border is only capable of communicating with Master. What do you think, Da Vinci? Let's see... Looks like we had some comm devices back in America. Oh, I even made a note saying how much easier they made things. We don't have anything like that right now, nor the materials to make them. Plus, this world doesn't really work by rules we're used to. Unlike proper human history, it's just too stagnant here for magical energy to reach around the world so readily. It's safe to communicate with Vane since he's a Kialda master. But any other transmission could end up getting intercepted. Sorry, but no dice. Gotcha. Well, that's right, shame. Suppose we can always use the demonic beast we domesticated. You mean you've domesticated a demonic beast here, too? Of course. Well, it wasn't my doing as much as, uh, mages. But y'all get the idea. You got any casters working for you? <laughs> two. Maverisbrawn has certainly proven most dependable, but who's the other one you're talking about? Ow! Hey there, I'm Leonardo da Vinci, caster extraordinaire. Well, this is a surprise. For some reason, I already know your name. But I didn't really expect the prime of your life to be at... to have been at such a young age. Yeah, it's weird. Don't worry about it. Is it so strange? Uh, yeah. Looking at you now, you almost look like a ch you you look almost like a child. Guess it's true what they say about artists and writers hitting their peak at different ages. What are you saying? Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. She may look young, but she's just as old and cranky on the inside as Ouch! Anyway, can I see this demonic beast of yours? Sure, here he is. What the fuck is that? It certainly is an unusual looking creature. 
Even I've never seen its like before. He could be a species that went extinct in our world. That aside, he's certainly... <laughs> Obscenely adorable. Right, he's a real cutie. Does he have a name? Sure he does. This is Shan Shan. What a lovely name. This little fella here can sniff out Beowulf for me purely from our magical energy. Interesting, but I'm afraid I don't see how he could follow magical energy through a comms device. Then I will have him learn my scent. Here, Shan Shan, it is alright. Is he just me, or is he really, really afraid of you? Well, I suppose these things happen. <laughs> wow, she's really taking this hard. She did grow up in the forest among all sorts of different beasts, after all. Fair point. Well, I have killed many of his fellow demonic beasts. I suppose, suppose it is no wonder he is frightened of me. What about me? Well, now, he certainly seems fine with the master here. Shan Shan, I want you to remember his scent. Can you do that? He's shaking his head. Ah, I see. Okay, I understand. Adelante, he can't learn your scent because you're too similar to demonic beasts. As far as Shan Shan's concerned, you're more of a predator than a friend. I see. Well, if that is how it is, then there is nothing I can do. As for you, Master of Kialda, that missing coat of yours seems to be masking any magical energy he might use to track you. Of course, you probably can't survive here without it, and since Shan Shan can't track Yaga since... Yeah, yeah, that rules me out too. I suppose that doesn't leave us much choice. Well then, I've come to a decision. I'll go with them. So what, you're just gonna pawn these guys off on me? Putting down roots ain't really in the cards for outlaws like me. Besides, you're a king. The heart of it is that I got a feeling while we servants were summoned here to fight this Ivan the Terrible. Of course, that's true of you as well, Bayo. But you got other things to keep you here. But that ain't the case for me. Honestly, I... Whoa there, Billy. You don't need to say anything more. Go on, then. Get out of here. I surely will. Sorry to be leaving you behind with all the tough work. Ah, well, what can you do? That's just how it is for kings. And this time I didn't have to sleep with a dragon woman. Or kill an unspeakable monster barehanded. Thanks, Bayo. You take care of these folks while I'm away. Don't worry, they'll be in good hands. There you have it, Adelante. Billy's gonna be tagging along with you now. I would ask if you would be able to keep these Yaga in line on your own, but I suppose that would be unbecoming. Damn straight it would. I'm Beowulf, remember? As long as this spirit origin body of mine remembers I'm a king, I'll make a fair, just government and save the people of this land. And only possibly be seduced once or twice. Once or twice. A fair and just government. Thank you, Majesty. Honestly, I'm not really cut out for this stuff. So there you have it, Adelante. From now on, me and all these other outlaw Yago will be helping the rebel army out. As for you, Master of Kialda, Kialda, you have my word that I'll support you guys however I can. Thank you, Beowulf. I am finally beginning to see a path to defeating Ivan the Terrible. Just be careful. Ivan the Terrible is seriously bad news. I've never seen him in person, but I can tell he's like a bomb waiting to go off. Oh yeah. God, I cannot wait until we go back to Interludes or the Apocrypha. Mm, I may not even use him for the Apocrypha banner or Apocrypha event. Mm, I don't want to use him because it's so spoilers to see him. I know. That is the one thing I have been certain of since I was summoned here. He has lived for over 450 years. He is likely to be as powerful as a phantasmal from the Age of Gods, potentially even the level of a divine beast. Compared to that, my Chaldean boar was merely a common demonic beast. The Opernik are a real pain too, since they're as strong as a servant in their own right. What did you say? Hold it, hold it. As strong as a servant? 
I was able to defeat one of them myself. A servant should have no trouble with them. Ah, right. The Opernik in the capital are a lot stronger than the ones around the frontier. Really? The closer you get to the capital, the stronger they get. I'm guessing it's something to do with their faith in the Tsar. The more the Opernik believe in him, the more it manifests as increased strength. You're kidding me. This is awful. <laughs> they got nothing on us. I'm sorry for getting flustered. You're right. I know we can take them. Pardon my intrusion, but there's one last thing I would like to ask of you. Are you familiar with that giant tree? The one supposedly called the Tree of Emptiness? Of course. Didn't know that was its name, though. Is there anything you can tell us about it? Anything at all? I think I might have heard something before. Hey, wasn't Zandanov talking about it not too long ago? Remember, back when he was still in Yaga Moscow, said he had some... See, said he and some friends of his went to get a look at it? That's it. And I think he said there was nothing there. Nothing? Yeah, just a plain old giant tree. So it's nothing but an ordinary if giant tree, is it? Fascinating. The more I hear, the more intriguing this becomes. Really? Plain old tree fascinating? Absolutely. I would like to go see it for myself, but... I definitely wouldn't do that if I were you. At things right near Yaga Moscow. Not the kind of place you just wander into for a bit of sightseeing. Naturally. Alright, now that that's settled, I think it's time we get started. First off, we need to talk about our plan of action. We'll wait for the right time to make a move, then we'll go s around stirring up trouble near the capital. And you would do this as a diversionary action in order to draw out the capital's opera, Nick? Right. They don't care what we get up to here on the frontier, but they're not gonna take anything that disturbs their Tsar's glory lying down. So they'll definitely send out the Opernik in droves to deal with us. I'm sure they'll summon more Opernik afterward, but it's not going to happen right away. Which means this would give you rebel guys a chance to attack the capital while it's relatively unguarded. How's that sound? That sounds ideal to me as well. What do you think, Master? There's still the Priest Co and one more. You mean the three servants who attacked Kialda? Given that the Opernik helped them and that this is Russia, I think that girl's true name might be... Yeah, I'd give it odds that she's the Grand Duchess. I don't know what she's uh, doing on Ivan's side, but given that she is, I think our only option is to face them all head on. My contact in the capital has reported seeing a young woman there. He said she's called the Grand Duchess and that she commands the highest respect from the Opernik, despite appearing human. I mean, but we already knew that. Uh, gotcha. This is your dream, eh? All right! Mmm, ominous! Maybe that was Cadoc? And he was seeing Anastasia's memory? I don't know. 